Hello everybody, my name is Kirk with Game Goblin, and I'm going to show you how to make custom decks with Tabletop Simulator. Both traditional poker sized decks and square decks. To start, you will need to have your card front images already made as individual PNGs or JPEGs along with one card back image. My first example deck will be a 40 card poker deck with cards that are 750 by 1050 pixels. The 41st image is the card back. The second example will be a 19 card poker deck, and the third example will be a single card that will be used as a two sided player aid. The fourth and fifth examples will be two square decks that are 750 by 750 pixels. You can go with images that are a bit larger, but I found 750 to be the optimal size for the smallest side on any card to keep the loading time down while still producing a clear image. Let's go find the deck editor script that comes with your copy of Tabletop Simulator. Head to the main drive where your program files are stored. In my case, it's the C drive. Find the program files x86 folder, open it, and scroll down to the Steam folder. Open that, then Steam Apps, Common, Tabletop Simulator, Modding, and finally the Deck Builder folder. In there you'll find a ttsdeckeditor.exe file. Double click that to launch it. I'm just arranging my window and the editor for an easy drag and drop of the files that I need. I prepared multiple examples with different card counts to show you how we will calculate the different grid sizes. This first deck is 19 cards, which makes a nice 5x4 grid that will hold 20 card images. The editor is designed to save that last spot in the grid for your card back image, but you want to drag and drop that image separately by itself after the first 19 cards are placed. Group select your 19 card front images, drag them over and drop them on the editor. The editor will open a prompt asking you for the width and height of the grid you wish to make. We're going to make it 5 cards wide and 4 cards high to fit all 20 of our images. Next we're going to drag and drop the card back image into the 20th spot. With our grid built, we'll go to File, Export, and Export a PNG of the grid. Here you can change some settings and restrict the maximum size of the file, but I haven't had any issues with grids larger than the suggested 4096 by 4096 so I usually just export with the default setting. Navigate to the folder you wish to export your grid PNG to and give your file a name. Here's a little naming tip that will save your bacon when it comes time to import your deck into Tabletop Simulator. Add the grid size and the card count into the name. Here I've added 5x4 and 19 cards into the file name. Save that file and we'll come back to it later. Right now let's make the other decks using the deck editor. Go ahead and close the new deck tab. You may save that build as a file if you like, but I've never needed those files again and just built decks from scratch if I've needed to make card edits since it's easy enough. The next deck has 40 cards, which is a nice round number to work with, but here's where it gets a little tricky. This is where you have to work around the script's funky programming. It wants to save that last spot of your grid for the card back. For example, even if my 40th image was the card back, it won't place that last image in that spot. It will instead make a whole new deck and place that image in it by itself. Believe me, it took a few times to figure out what was going on, but by the end of this video, it should make sense to you too. To work around this, we're not going to grab all 40 cards. I'm going to deselect the 40th card and place it by itself just like we did with the card back from the 19 card deck we made before. I'm going to drop the 39 card images into the editor and when prompted, choose to make my grid 8 cards wide and 5 cards high. We'll hit OK and our 40 card deck grid will be made. Note that if I had tried to drop all 40 cards into an 8x5 grid, the script would not have placed the 40th card into that last spot. Remember, it's programmed to keep that last spot empty for the card back. If you did try, it will prompt you to create a second grid to put that card in. Instead, I'm going to use this last spot for my 40th card instead of the card back. Tabletop Simulator gives you the option when you import a deck to use the card back that you load there as the hidden card image instead of the last card of the grid. I'll show you when we get there, and hopefully it'll make sense. For now, let's grab the 40th card and drop it onto that last spot. Don't worry about that card back for now. It will be imported separately within Tabletop Simulator. Use File Export again to save the PNG to your selected folder. I've added 8x5 and 40 cards to this file name to help me when I import it later. For my single card player aid example, we don't need to use the deck editor. I'll show you how to import a single card when we get to Tabletop Simulator. Now, let's dig into some square cards. The deck editor will take the dimensions of your card into account when creating the grid, so you don't need to do anything special when making cards outside the norm like squares. We'll select the 18 card fronts and drag and drop them into the editor. We'll use a 5x4 grid so they all fit. Even though I don't usually use the setting that uses the last image of the grid as the hidden image, I just drop the card back in there anyway when it's open. Go ahead and use File Export again to save your PNG. You don't need to make any changes in the pop-up dialog even though we're doing square cards. For this file name, I'll add 5x4 and 18 cards to remind me of the settings needed during import. The fifth example will be a 5 card square deck. I'll grab the 5 cards and drop them into the editor, and set the grid to 3 wide by 2 high. Then I'll drop the card back into the last spot. And finally save it with SQ, 3 by 2, and 5 cards in the file name. Now we have our files prepped to import into Tabletop Simulator. Go ahead and open up Tabletop Simulator, then go to Objects, Components, Custom, and drag a deck from the window onto the table. 
When the import window pops up, we'll keep the type as a rectangle with rounded corners for these poker decks. Now we'll hit the Browse Location folder to find and import the card face grid PNG that we made with the deck editor. We'll start with the 5x4 19 card deck that we made. Good thing we put that information in the name because we'll need it handy for the next few steps. Select that file and make sure to hit Cloud and then upload it. It needs to be on the cloud so that players have access to the image when they load your game. Leave unique backs unchecked for regular cards like this. I'll make a separate tutorial in the future to cover other custom decks that would use unique backs. Now click the Browse folder and upload your single card back image. Even though it's on the last part of the grid, Tabletop uses that last spot as the image for when a card is hidden from other players in your hand. This card back image will be used for the back we see when the deck or card is on the table. Go ahead and load that image to the cloud. We now need to tell Tabletop Simulator the dimensions and the card count of the grid we are importing. This is the info we put into the file name. I'll move the sliders to 5 for width, 4 for height, and 19 for number of cards. We don't want these cards to be oriented sideways, so I'll leave that unchecked. The next setting is one I do use for decks like the ones we built today. Instead of using the last slot on the grid for the hidden image, I prefer to set it to use the card back image we uploaded above. The difference between the hidden image and the card back is something I'll cover in a future tutorial for even more custom card settings and info. Finally, let's hit import and check out our deck. Give it a little time to load, and then close the custom window. Use the plus and minus keys to scale the deck up to the size you want. You can right click the deck and use search to make sure all your cards are there and formatted properly. If they don't look right, it's usually because you've entered the incorrect width, height, or card number count settings during the import. This is why we put that info in the name, to make sure we got it right. Your deck is ready to rock. Save it as part of your mod and it's ready to shuffle up and deal. Let's import the next deck. Go to Objects, Component, Custom, and drop another deck on the table. Let's load the 8x5 40 card deck we built as the card face. Next, find that deck's card back image and load it to the cloud for the back. Now we'll set the width slider to 8 and the height to 5. Our number is 40 for the number of cards in this deck. A little note here, if our deck was only 37 cards, we'd still use an 8x5 grid with 40 spots, leaving a few spots blank. In that case, we'd slide the number to 37 instead of 40 so Tabletop knows to ignore those blank spots and doesn't make cards with blank faces. Here, we'll click to use the card back image we uploaded as the hidden image. It's especially important for this deck because we've used all 40 spots of the grid for our card fronts. If we didn't click this, it may show the 40th card as the card back when it's in a player's hand. It's a fringe setting that's a little more specialized, which as I've said, I'll cover in another tutorial. Let's import that deck and check it out. Looking good. Now let's switch gears and import a single card using our player aid example. Let's grab a card from the custom window instead of a deck. We'll leave the shape as rectangle with rounded corners again and click the face folder browser to find and upload our face card image. We'll do the same for the back and find the image that will be on the other side of the card. It's not a sideways card, so we'll leave that unchecked and import the card. Scale it up to the size you want and check out both sides. Now you have a player aid that you can copy and paste as many copies of as you need. Let's tackle those square cards now. Grab a custom deck and drop it on the table. Under type, we'll keep it rectangle with rounded corners as Tabletop will read the size of each side from the grid we upload and make them square automatically. I promise I'll cover hex and circle decks in that future tutorial. Let's load that 5x4 18 card square deck we made for the card faces. And then load the single card back image for the back. From our file name, we notice that the sliders to a width of 5, a height of 4, and the number of cards to 18. Click to use your card back as the hidden image and import the deck. Give it a moment to load and you should see the deck form to fit the square image of your cards. Let's scale it up and check it out. Let's do the last square deck example. Drop a custom deck onto the table and upload the 3x2 grid to the card faces. Here I set the width to 3, the height to 2, and the card count to 5 while I still had the file name fresh in my memory before uploading the card back image. I did it in this order because by the fourth deck my short term memory was forgetting that info. Now we'll upload the card back image, check back as hidden, and hit import. And there we go. You should be able to import rectangle and square decks like a pro. If you have any questions or comments for my next custom deck segment, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please hit like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials related to game design or more about my games. If you have any questions, comment here or hit me up on Discord, Facebook, or Twitter. You can find links for all of those in the latest news on GameGoblin.com. Thanks for playing!